This morning's word is entitled, When God Steps In. Something the Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago and just highlighted a truth that I believe we all know, but we might not take as seriously as we should. I want to start off by just sharing a testimony of a, a lady that I know in the town where I grew up, Kronstadt, and um, her husband was a womanizer for many years and was an alcoholic for many years, and he was a, actually a respected man in town. He had an important occupation, and um, what happened is um, he would even cheat on her, and a lot of bad things would happen that she'd have to endure, and for 20 years, she prayed for him, literally day and night, literally had to forgive him many times when, when she heard of the things he was doing and um, his adulterous affairs, etc., and the way he behaved in the bar, etc., and um, she'd have to bear with that for 20 years, and she just kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, never gave up, never decided to leave him, never decided to divorce him, just held on and kept holding on to God for a breakthrough in her husband's life, and a breakthrough came. 20 years later, he got radically saved and um, started using his work for the kingdom of God. When people came in with problems or issues, he would turn them to Christ. He would show them to Christ, and a massive breakthrough happened in their family, between her and her husband, there was forgiveness, there was restoration, reconciliation. The children could be proud of their father. You know, he's not the town drunk anymore and he doesn't misbehave, even though during the day he was a respectable, I can't say what, doing his job. But um, things turned completely around because of the sacrifice she made. A powerful resurrection power was released by the Spirit of God. And her husband, till the day of his death, was used as a mighty instrument of reconciliation in the town between people and businesses and situations. So with that story, I want to ask you the question, who finds it easy to make a sacrifice? Nobody? Come on, there must be one who doesn't mind making a sacrifice. I think most of us find it quite difficult and challenging to make a sacrifice. Would you agree with that at least? Who finds it difficult to make a sacrifice for the kingdom of God? Come on, you must raise your hand. It's tough. Hey, raise, be honest. Yeah, it's tough. So we look at the price that, has to pay, that we have to pay, the cost we're going to pay, and therefore we also think of the discomfort that this sacrifice is going to bring. And then we, we want to waver away and we think what we can't pursue the sacrifice. There's, there's going to be emotional pain. There's going to be physical pain involved in making this sacrifice. And often we choose the easier route, the less sacrificial route, different to what we actually know God is calling us to do. But we choose the less sacrificial route, the more traveled route. Now, how many of you would agree that you and I generally choose the less sacrificial route. Who's guilty with me? All of us, eh? Most of us. So we choose the less sacrificial route, and the less sacrificial route is the more traveled route. It's the wider road, eh? Now, okay, but we can't apply that wider, thinner road because it speaks about salvation, not so. But I mean, it is the wider road, it's the more traveled road that we all tend to choose. The one that has more comfort. We, we struggle to choose the one that has least comfort. Now, for example, um, this one guy and his friend are very astute cyclists. They cycle. Cycling is very much on our minds and thoughts with the five men cycling in Malawi, 500 kilometers. I think they did more than that from what I hear. But in any case, so let's use it as an example. There's two guys they love cycling, they have nice bicycles, um, but the one guy's bicycle is reasonably old, it's still in good working condition, it's reasonably old, and somebody gives him a very smart new bicycle, a very expensive, top of the range, new bicycle, and, um, and his friend, in that same time, when he gets this new bicycle to replace the old bicycle, his friend's bicycle breaks, and... Um, and there's this crazy thought in him that he, he has to give this new bicycle to the friend. 
And uh, it's such a nice bicycle. He'd like to keep it for himself. And, um, and, and the thought just keeps growing in him that he must give this bicycle his seed. He must sow it into um, his friend's life because his bike is still working, but it's old. But he's been dreaming of this new bicycle that this other person gave him as a gift. And this crazy thought keeps coming out. And, and this, he just thinks to himself, this sacrifice is just too big and too painful to make. How can the Lord expect of me to give this bicycle um, to, this, to this friend of mine? You know, and he even goes as far as taking the thoughts captive and rebuking the thoughts. <laughs> because is it, can it now really be God, you know? You know, it's the enemy, you know, and, he's, and he's, he's getting upset and he's rebuking and he's taking captive and he's doing warfare. But this thought just doesn't stop. It says, give the bicycle away. And then he, he opts for the best, the second best route. He says, okay, I'm going to keep the bicycle and I'm going to give a thousand rand towards my friend's purchase of a new bicycle. So he gives the thousand rand to his friend. Say, hey, here's the deposit or whatever for your new bicycle. And he chooses the shortcut to obedience. But actually, he's choosing disobedience. The second route isn't obedience. It's actually disobedience. And I'll make the next statement. We don't realize, or you and I don't realize, that you are actually shortchanging yourself of a beautiful plan that God has for your life when you do that. That guy doesn't realize by obeying the Lord in making that difficult, hard sacrifice, he's short-changing, he's short-circuiting an amazing plan, a beautiful blessing that, that is awaiting him if he's willing to make that hard sacrifice. He misses the big picture. And he's not going to fulfill the beautiful plan that God wants to do with the sacrifice if he's willing to make it. With every God-led crucifixion, there is always a God-guaranteed resurrection. There should be a slide. With every God-led crucifixion, there is always a God-guaranteed resurrection. Do you believe that? There really is amazing resurrection awaiting every God-led crucifixion where God guides us to make a tough choice, a hard sacrifice. Friends of ours uh, were missionaries, are still missionaries to a certain extent, and um, they had a support check many years ago of 1,500 rand. That's the support they lived off. And then they lived by faith for the rest of their expenses. So there was just a little that, that they could pay the basic expenses. And so at a service, this guy and his wife spoke to this elderly gentleman that is an owner of three or four farms and he's good friends with this man's children. And this guy says to this farmer, how's it going with the farming? And the guy says, I'm on the point of bankruptcy. Um, we've had drought, second year going. We're probably going to lose everything. And please pray for us. And, and the Lord speaks to this guy and his wife separately. And they feel they must sign over their support check to this farmer. So they have no support now for this month. They're living by faith. So they must sign off the support check to the farmer. And they say, listen, we want to give you this check. He doesn't know it's their livelihood. Well, God is their livelihood, not the check. And so they sign over this check to the farmer. And just after that, they sense in their hearts, God saying to them, what are you, I'm asking you to ask me what you want for sowing that seed. They really sense the Lord said, you know, like Solomon, where the Lord said to Solomon, you can ask for anything. And Solomon said, I want wisdom. And God said, okay, because you're willing to sacrifice selfishness, I'll give you everything else. And the Lord said to this couple, listen, what do you want? Because you've sown totally, and you've made this big sacrifice. What do you want? And, and the, the couple looked at each other. They shared with us. They looked at each other, and they said, Lord, if ever you want to give us a house, we'll take it. Thank you, you know. It's not an issue, but okay, thank you. 
And a few years later, somebody came to the couple and said, the Lord has laid it on my heart to give you $15,000 to start building your house. And so the Lord came through powerfully. There was a powerful resurrection after the sacrifice that was made. Remember, the the amazing, most powerful, life-changing truth is that there must always be a resurrection with every crucifixion that we make for him. Let's go look at John chapter 12, verses 1 to 24. Let's go look at the events after the resurrection of Lazarus. So here we're going to look at the fruits and the effects of the resurrection or the results of the resurrection. What are the fruits and the results of the resurrection? If we look at John 12, verses 1 to 2, it says, Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. The word I'd like us to notice there is dinner. They had a massive celebration. And that is one of the fruits of every resurrection is celebration. A big breakthrough has happened. They are enjoying the reality of the miracle. They are just wallowing in the glory of the great resurrection, of the the big breakthrough that God has given them. They're enjoying the wonder, the wow of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Imagine for yourself that happening. It is literally a human being raised from the dead and you are sitting opposite him and he was dead a few days prior. Have you ever thought of that? Just on that note, um, we were doing training as pastors many years ago and uh, one guy that was busy teaching us um, came to us and he said to us, um, you know, one thing that really blew his mind was He was training these underground pastors in China and um, teaching them the word of God. And they came to him afterwards and they said to him, please, will you pray for us? We're very worried. And he said, why are you worried? And they said to him, well, um, we've had a month ago, we raised somebody from the dead. The anointing is lessening upon our lives. A month ago, we could raise somebody from the dead. Before that, you were raising them from the dead all the time. And this pastor said to them from Singapore, I'm not qualified to pray for you. I've never raised anyone from the dead. So it's in that milieu that that there's such a celebration, which is a clear fruit of every resurrection, be it a personal sacrifice like this couple that God gave a house or whatever sacrifice you make, there's a beautiful resurrection. And the first fruit or one of the powerful fruits is just a celebration of what God has done. We go look at verse three. It says, then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it. Wiping his feet with her hair, the house was filled with a fragrance. So this was clearly a very expensive perfume. Would you agree with me? A very expensive, and that's the key words. And the expensive perfume says to us the second aspect, or one of the other aspects of resurrection, a fruit of resurrection is unlimited appreciation. She just said, no cost is too high. I have unlimited appreciation, gratefulness, and thankfulness for this resurrection, for my brother living again. And the results of this unlimited appreciation is a deepening. Would you agree with me? When you have that kind of appreciation for what God has done for you after you laid something down, after you've made a sacrifice, and a massive breakthrough has resulted as a result of your obedience, there's such an appreciation that it results in a deepening, a deepening of relationship. When you are so appreciative of God and the people around you, and there's this fuzzy, warm feeling of goodness, of family love, there is a deepening of relationships and relationship bonds. There's a strengthening of ties. There's a cementing, a coming together 
There's a devotion that grows stronger, a commitment that grows stronger. There's an uncompromising family that is birthed out of resurrection power. If you want to get your family together, then trust God. Make a sacrifice that God tells you to do. And then trust God for that resurrection. And when that resurrection comes, I'm telling you, division is out the door. Unity steps in. There's an there's a, there's a, a atmosphere of acceptance, love, appreciation of one another. When one has such appreciation that you use the most thinkable, expensive perfume to show your gratitude. And a covenant is birthed amongst people when they have such love and appreciation for one another because of resurrection power regarding a situation. And people come to a place where they are willing to lay down their lives for one another. It brings an aroma. It speaks here of the perfume. It brings an aroma of a beautiful scent of harmony. That's what resurrection does. It brings a, a sense of harmony. We don't quibble about nonsense. We don't point and criticize about stupid and silly things. We, we major on the majors and we, we minor on the minors. We no longer major on the minors with resurrection power. There's an unconditional love, love of heaven that's released when you're willing to, you, when, you, when you do not consider the cost because you're so appreciative of what God has done for you. So there's an unconditional love that arrived in that meeting between Jesus, Martha, and Mary, and all the other people. Heaven becomes tangible with resurrection power. And then we struggle to make the sacrifice. To lay down that which God asks us to lay down. Because we miss the sight, the vision of the beautiful breakthrough, the resurrection. The wow, the great we just focus on the now pain, the price we must pay. We don't see the thereafter. And heaven becomes tangible with resurrection power. It descends upon us. We don't quibble anymore. There's a realization that really nothing is too hard to overcome. When resurrection power is birthed within your midst, there's a realization that nothing is too hard to overcome. But you have to make the sacrifice before you get to the resurrection. You have to make the crucifixion before you get to the resurrection. Amen and I know just amen.